folks. Welcome back. We had a brand new episode of Trainwreck tonight. We're all the way up to episode 168. Happy Tuesday. It was a rainy day in Cheek to Vegas, Maniac, but the Spurs, big win at home, 2 nothing. And what else we got going on? Rumblings of phase four. So big things going on here in Western New York. Show sponsor, Pazda Electric. Folks, considering a residential or a commercial electrical project, then consider our friends at Pazda Electric, 716-698-2711. From new house wiring, main service upgrades to troubleshooting issues, Pazda Electric licensed all over Erie County. Mention Trainwreck Sports or say, this train never stops and get a free house surge protector with every service upgrade. Pazda Electric, 716-698-2711. So I know we wanted to start off the show talking about these phases, but we got to talk about this maniac. Fill the people in about this Passad bomb. We got That's a Passad bomb. It's not, I'd say they're not as much, you know, as Woj bombs, which are obviously the top of the industry right now. But Passad bombs, MLBPA accepting a 60-day deal. A lot of people saw this writing on the wall. I think there was a lot of worry a week ago, Al, but now it was kind of like they were just hedging out the differences. And finally – it sounds like they've locked it in. Everyone's going to report by July 1, so it'll be interesting to see who, who, who only has a week to get in shape here. But we will be reporting July 1, and we should have 60 games of baseball over the next four to five months. And that's something to look forward to for sports fans all over the, all over the place. Oh, and the typical non-baseball fans that bitch about 162 games, they're going to love dream, this. Dream a season dream, for them. Dream season, 60 games, but – I think the craziest thing over the past, like, what do we want to call it, two, three, four weeks, two months even, is can you believe the flip-flopping from sport to sport? It's like they're close to coming back. Then they're back here. And you can yeah. say that about MLB, NBA, NHL, everything. And even NFL now is being questioned. You know what I'm saying? But You know what it is? It's like turning on all the circuit breakers, though. You got to have, like, nine going the right way or, like, the one, you know, if you don't have the one going – that none of them work. And obviously they keep seeing these setbacks. You get, I mean, the NHL saw a couple of huge setbacks. A lot of people testing positive there. You saw today Joker, Djokovic tested positive. And they had that footage of him at the party, like going all over. Did you see that, that Ravel no. posted? Ravel posted literally Djokovic like partying like a week ago. And he's like shirtless at a party, just going nuts, like hugging people. Oh Jesus. man. You're talking about the tennis player. Yeah, Novak, Djokovic. Okay, because I saw Djokovic of the Nuggets. Yeah. He's also tested positive. Oh, he, he did? In, yeah, he, in Serbia. In Serbia, he also tested positive. So, no bueno. You're, it's just like, with these sports, it's like, I hate to say it, but like, you almost have to be somewhat okay with players testing positive, right? Like, you can't, like, you can't expect zero people on every team in all these big games and like across the board and all these four major sports to just no one ever test positive. That's right? the dilemma you're going to run into. I mean, what happens if it gets down to the Western conference finals and Dwight Howard or, uh, you know, like one of those role players on the Lakers test positive. No. Oh, my, my like, brother. Yeah, like, so what, what, yeah, wait, wait, go on. What, what, what give, give me what, uh, shoot dog had. Talk. Yeah. Talk, 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 talk came up with this is what happens if, in a, like a football season, or it doesn't matter what sport, what happens if double-digit players get infected? Yeah. And they have to sit two weeks. So are the Bills calling up practice squad guys, lining up again? You know what I mean? Like that's but you've seen thing. that uh, there's a couple coaches, like I've talked about it, I think. Uh, what's his name on the Buccaneers? Starts with a Bruce Arians. He was yeah. talking about it. He's like, you might just have a QB that you have on the roster – that's just nowhere near anything. It doesn't come to the practice facility at all. So that way, if there's somehow like some kind of outbreak, you know, you have that reserve guy. Of course. Thanks a lot, Phil. Thanks a lot for that take. But uh, yeah, no, you might see a situation like that. So it'd be very interesting to see. I'm sure someone will have tactics where when it comes to light, what they did, will be like, whoa. And yeah, I saw that, like, just today on ESPN, uh, Brady and the Bucks are working out despite the virus upticks in florida you know florida yeah. was a state that went back this this you know, guy is just a super villain that's all i'm saying is whether it's cheating or practicing during an outbreak i mean go home tom the nfl literally urged everybody they said 
No unnecessary workouts, no secondary workouts. And there he is. He's getting his Instagram posts up. He's getting his Instagram stories up. I mean, let's face it. If this guy was an NFL player, he'd just be a creepy 40-year-old dude posting videos on Instagram. Who's working for Tom Brady doing his social media? Oh, like probably a, like a legit media company, no doubt about it. I mean, probably one of the people we outsource our stuff to. I mean, probably he, the people I mean, we send burrs on the rocks to. <laughs> you you got to admit, it's pretty incredible stuff. The, oh, the no, no like, doubt about it. I mean, they're, like, think about it. If you if you're making thirty million a year, like just knowing like us, like you wouldn't spend like like you know a full time salary on someone just managing that for you. Oh my God, you're right. What's a couple two hundred thousand dollars for Tom Brady? Nothing for that family. Uh, but in other sports, I heard today that the NHL now is down to six hub cities. One is not Buffalo due to what happened at the Harbor Center. The um, they're boards. down the, the freaking boards. The I HVAC. heard of Intel. We had Intel from the HVAC company that it was just standard procedure. There was just like a, a random issue. It wasn't like they did something wrong. I mean, you know who that it, came from was, was the Urschel family. Really? Yes. So I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to reveal too many other uh, sources there. But you, if you saw, he actually responded to Buff Vogel. Did he? He goes, he goes check your facts, John. <laughs> Oh my! God. We're gonna get that to you, but it's but it's funny because like it's such a rare like like that's that's not a lane for him to go on to, so it's like it mm-hmm. gives you that legitimacy, you know. It's like when someone that doesn't speak up very often or like doesn't post on a platform very often does it, it's like it it rings a little bit more crucial. Like I fire out a tweet, nobody cares. You fire out like a two p.m. lock, people do care, but like they're a little thumb to it. You no, know, like, I get what you're saying, but yeah, when no you get the most people that don't send out tweets. And then they're like attacking somebody. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, it's it's credible. Or or posting pictures from a profile. <laughs> so the six hub cities right now: Vegas, Chi Town, Edmonton, L.A., Toronto, Vancouver. I think Vegas just needs to be completely repurposed to hold all the athletic events. They could be a Corona sanctuary. It could be like a six month thing. Everyone like like literally there could be a border around like a bubble around Vegas, around the Vegas strip. And to get inside the bubble, you have to do like a full test, like one of the full tests, and they can get like instant responses. Cause let's face it, these leagues are worth billions of dollars. They can get those tests done. Yep. Uh yeah, but so I mean I think that that's my ridiculous spin on it. Let's put everyone to Vegas. Obviously, they're planning to go forward with the NBA in uh Disney World. You saw the seating for the uh hotels that's ridiculous but yeah. so yeah i mean the hub cities i'm all about vegas being a hub city for everything that's my take here's my take though on vegas is like i mean we saw what a week or two ago now i mean the casinos were popping i mean you didn't you, you didn't have people wearing masks you had people yeah. playing poker roulette blackjack <laughs> right next to each other i mean you've seen the things online like they're, they're gonna play poker with like the boards on the side or whatever we like, talked about it with fates Yes, but Vegas was not like that. It's just very, like, I, I mean, I'd be interested to see our spikes in the rise there. Who knows what the hell is going on? But, like, that city was popping as soon as the casinos were back open. And I know we don't want to get into a big virus discussion. Obviously, it's very important. Al, everyone has to train our sports. Stay safe. Make sure you're maintaining your distance and everything. Even when we got together to film something the other day, we still maintained our distance. Weren't together for more than 20 minutes. So, Basically, the only thing uh, I would say on it is that, you know, New York obviously was a huge hub for it because you're seeing some outbreaks in some southern areas and some other states now. New York was a huge area in March, and they've kind of flattened slash crushed it by June. So there's still a lot of time for those cities, you know, that are having outbreaks right now, hopefully to uh, flatten it and get moving in the right direction before the fall. 100%. And let's go real quick. Back to some other sports. I mean, Maniac, I know you've been following. we got, what, EPL? Syria, Bundesliga, La I'm a, Liga. I'm a KBO and EPL guy now. I said it like these sports. Yep. I, I think, you know, to be honest, I actually might have to take a little responsibility because I tweeted out, you know, don't tempt me sports because I'm only like two weeks away from becoming a tennis, KBO, EPL guy. Like like yep. 2 p.m. on a Tuesday? Like what's it, What's not to like? Like, so, like, like, like it fits way better with the schedule than during primetime TV. Or keeping and me up till like you're right. 11 p.m. And listen, I've seen you've been on Twitter at you know you're on Twitter the 5 a.m. hours, 6 a.m. <laughs> hours. I love it because and here's the deal with me though it's it's starting to get really freaky. It's like my brain is like it wants me to bet this Japanese baseball 
South Korean KBO. Bro, I'm consistently waking up at 4.45, 5, 10. It's really weird. Well, and well, like, I told you the scary thing with me because you see that I'm up. Like, I, I, and I think you're saying the same thing is that yeah. no alarm. Like, NC yep. Dinos, like, you know, these yeah. squads. I mean, the Kuwum Heroes, the Hanwha <laughs> Eagles. <laughs> I mean, Dude. when I see the Samsung Lions, like, I honestly thought for, like, a week that the Samsung Lions were, like, the Samsung, like, like, you know, like the Samsung Galaxy, like, you know, like, yeah. no, it's a completely different organization, but I mean, why not? Why not get me that action? I mean, wh- what's the difference if I'm not watching the game? What's the difference between watching a game, you know, between the LG Twins and the Kia Tigers versus watching a Saturday night game when I'm getting ready to go out to the bars between the Diamondbacks and the Dodgers? You're right. There's really no difference, but I think the biggest thing for me is if I know I have action on something, like, I am not sleeping. Like, there's, <laughs> there is no way, even if I'm not watching it, even if I'm just, like, laying in bed, sitting there, like, just watching flash score for something to change, <laughs> like, I am not score. going back to bed. It's not happening. Well, you might not go back to bed, but let's face it. We've all, we've all fallen asleep once or twice, and we said, then you get that wake up, that groggy wake up. <laughs> you, you, like, you just hit, like, you're <laughs> that, yep. Yep. <laughs> No, oh, it's amazing. And, like, the, K- the KBO, Japanese baseball, all these leagues that are back right now, I love the action. And, obviously, here in the States, we're seeing NASCAR. We're seeing golf. We're seeing tennis. Wait, maybe, like, how much tennis have you been seeing? What's out there right now? Because, to be honest, well, I, haven't, I haven't been following too many tournaments. Well, like, I mean, you get to somewhere they're not even on, like, flash score. Like, so I'm not even, like, Ooh. getting crazy. So, you know, like, yeah, like, that's when you know, like, they're really digging deep. But, no, there's, like – there's been there were some in like South Carolina and Florida like Paolo Lorenzi and our boys at Justition were playing down there in a little bit. Yeah. Shout out uh, Matt, Nick, Ben, and uh, Derek was down there also as well. But yeah, uh, yeah so you're getting that. I mean, no, you're getting a lot. Like I, I think on the live beat the other day, I was seeing into the '80s and the '90s. So there's options. Okay. There's more options than ever. Before. You know what I had to say? Table tennis. You see how many options there are for that? Yes. Flash score is insane with some of the sports they pull out of their ass. Most definitely. I mean, I mean, how do they have all these updates that are happening, like, pretty much, like, live? Dude, I score mobile seen... is Score Mobile is on the hot seat big time I, because, like, I, I used to think Score Mobile was amazing. Oh, they're doing, like, these. Flash score makes Score Mobile look like a, like a, a school library versus, like, a public town library. Yes. Like, big time sports – for the score, they struggle even still. And like yeah. flash, flash score, you'll a goal will happen on your phone before it happens on TV, and that's the freakiest thing. Oh my gosh! When you, you see that? those li- when you see those live move, oh, that's the worst feeling. Yeah. But the other thing too is, uh, what was I just gonna say? Oh, I fucking lost it. And I I love the live commentary on flash score. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, the live the live comment. Oh, okay. This is what I was gonna say on like score mobile, you'll get like an interception or something and it'll show his like fourth and 47 like because they returned it and like all these errors whereas on uh flash score you'll get like pk like oh right away like they got the pk there's so you know exactly what's going on and yeah the details of the updates was opportunity missed he flashed one wide perhaps he'll be more responsible with the scoring chance next time <laughs> right? brilliant, like, brilliant save by the keeper <laughs> We need to do a whole segment where we just write flash score updates because these guys are brilliant, honestly. Oh. Like, they, are they robotically generated? Like, they have to be exaggerating on some of them. <laughs> There's no yeah. way they're not. Oh, he flashes it just one. Perhaps he'll be uh, more aggressive next time. <laughs> like, like, I would love to see that on Score Mobile. Like, like I don't want to see just strikes out swinging. Like, I want to see, like, struck out swinging and he literally missed by a foot. Like, or struck out swinging in his, like, bat when flying down the third baseline. Like, I want to see that. Yes. So, Maniac, real quick. So, we're talking about sports. Tell the people about your opening. You were there. Seneca Niagara Sports Book. And that casino last week. Yeah. Kind of surreal. I mean, obviously, people were there. Location. Seneca Niagara last Thursday at this point. So, obviously – be watching this tonight. We have the Buff Creek opening coming this Thursday. So what is there? Yeah. There's Phil. He's back in the picture. Yeah. But uh, so you're seeing lineup. So their big thing is six feet apart. They're they're playing into a big. Uh, what's their motto now? I'm like now I'm losing it. Uh, like so I, all I've been hearing close is close to slot. the action. 
something yeah. like what uh, I'm looking it up right now. But uh, so yeah, they had the lines. They had chips on the floor six feet apart. Oh my gosh! I mean, is is this true though? That right now at these, you know, Seneca casinos, it's all just sports book and slots, right? Yeah, sports book and slots. No card games. Nothing flying around in that regard. No, no, no. roulette. No roulette. No, nothing no bl- like that. Okay. I mean, that's pretty crazy. Nothing like, where people would be touching the chips, you know. And you know, I've never been to the Seneca Niagara sports book, but it's going to be interesting to see what the Buff Creek sports book does because there's not that many kiosks. So not that many kiosks. Not a lot of not a lot of room. How are you going to spread the? P- uh, yeah, that's the only thing is just is going to see what Buff Creek does on Thursday. We definitely got to get down there. Oh yeah, remember it's Seneca Casinos. Nothing else comes close. But then they've added in six feet apart. So it's that's nothing crazy. else comes close six feet apart. Yeah, so you're seeing the slots. Uh, sorry, that I didn't get into it before. You're seeing the slots. There's only like in a, where there used to be three, they took out the middle one. So everyone where there's middle one gone, anytime where there's a row of four, they just took out the middle two. They didn't like do alternating or anything. They took out the middle two, so you got one on each end. Wow. When you walk in, it's like almost like a TSA procedure. So you're walking in, wow. like, and I say, I say it a lightweight. You're not getting a full body scan. Obviously, you're not doing the machine where you're like this, you yeah. know. Oh, yeah, but, the but, rock. but no, you go there and they're, like, scanning your face for sure. Like, so they're making oh, sure. Really? Like, and anyone who gets flagged more than, like, I think 100 degrees or something gets, like, brought to the side. Oh, and they do, like, a secondary God. check. But, but it was pretty smooth for, like, their first opening. Like, when I saw, like. Obviously, it wasn't as many people as you go in, but we live in a different society now. I mean, I think 40 people to 50 people got in in a span of a couple minutes. I think that's not really that bad. Yeah, and you got to think of Buff Creek. I mean, I don't care about the slots, but the sports book, you know they're going to be wiping those things down. It's going to be a – I, should, like, I, I shouldn't call it a clean place, but, like, it's going to be like a – you should feel comfortable being able to go to Buff Creek and make a sports book bat with a mask on, hand sanitizer stations all around they're gonna make sure it's it's gonna be safe yeah no you want to make sure that it's gonna be safe and obviously i mean it's customers first so yeah be sure that it's going on and yeah the touch screens are gonna be interesting uh maybe limiting them or doing like staggered like a group of six kiosks are open and they put six people there and then the next six at like the other six stations so when those six leave like you're wiping down those six you know so you can alternate yeah. So obviously, you just don't want a free for all, but no, and exactly, I'm sure they'll have it organized in some way. I'm thinking of Buff it's Creek. It's crazy there. Yeah, Buff Creek. No, Buff Creek. Like, I mean, it's, that line around so like some small. of the hot spots. Yeah, like that line is narrow, narrow, narrow yeah. spaces. You have those first three kiosks on the left. Then you have that row of like six or seven. And Plain and like simple. Three. The kiosks were not built with social distancing in mind. Like, and that's not their fault. Like, because it's complete. Every slots aren't built with social distancing in mind. The whole casino isn't built with social distancing in mind. But those kiosks yeah. specifically are like 15 right on top of each other. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. You know, like you said, Buff Creek Thursday. Hashtag uh, bring Sen- your own bet. Seneca, Allegheny the following Thursday, July 2nd. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what they do. I'm definitely going to head down to Buff Creek one of those nights, days, to see what it's, what, what it's all about. Yeah. So, I, think we'll, I think we'll be camping out there. I think we'll have some live reporting going on Thursday. No doubt. Uh, real quick, and b- about the phases, what are we? Week two of phase three. We are very, very close to phase four in Western New York. Shout out to everyone in Western New York, and that's the reason why we're getting there is because everyone is taking part in what's going on. Um, but I'm hearing no gyms potentially, shopping malls, movie theaters. So there's some big parts of phase four, Maniac, that aren't going to be opening up right away. You know what? I think this is okay with me. And my view on this is that everything else is opening. I mean, and not to sound like ridiculous, but like what movies do we need to go see in movie theaters right now? Like movies are putting like yeah. the movies available on TV and on streaming services. It's actually better. It's better for the consumer. Yeah. Um, shopping malls. I mean, like, yeah, I get it. Like, I mean, I want to, I want to go hang out and get an icy at the gallery as much as the next person, but with that said, I think that keeping these things closed kind of reminds people like, hey, let's not like go crazy. Everything's not back like already. 
I yeah. think that kind of teaches us. And, like, the whole state's been fairly responsible as far as the numbers go. So, we'll see. Yeah. Continue to go there. But I think I actually appreciate that they're not opening everything right away. Yeah. Got to ask you, Maniac, when it comes to movie theaters, like, would you pay, like, 20 bucks? Yeah. To watch a movie yeah. in your own home than go to 100%. a movie theater? Yeah, right? Like, I what's, what is the, what's the whole thing with the movie theater experience, right? Well, you're like, getting great sound. You're getting a great big screen. But let's face it, like, nowadays – Pretty much everyone has like a 40 to 50 plus inch screen. Everyone has pretty yeah. decent sound. And yeah, if you can avoid spending $9 on a popcorn and, you know, $17 combined on a popcorn and a drink or whatever, that cost makes up. I mean, I would pay 30 to $40 to see like a top of the line blockbuster hit Agreed. in my, you know, house. I'll invite two or three people over and we'll split it. I mean, that's all you got to do in that, in that one right there. So true, exactly. Like the the fights, like big fight nights. You split exactly. It with your friends, oh my gosh! I mean, they, you want to talk about something not built for social distancing? Like those McGregor Mayweather, McGregor or Mayweather Pacquiao. Oh Those my those God. were not built for uh, less than five people or whatever. I think we had like twelve to fifty people. Shout out Max Zimmerman, who uh, you know just got tenure over at uh, Williamsville High School. So shout out to there. But also shout out to him for when we got mcgregor mayweather he or the first order he made he ordered it in standard definition so then oh we had to reorder it in high God. definition so he ordered it in standard definition at 109.99 and then we had to reorder it in high definition at 149.99 so he did call he did call a couple days later and get it refunded but it was it was a fun uh fun couple minutes there so nice 270 bucks yeah i cannot remember what fight it was where I could barely fit into the house to watch one of the fights. And I'm not sure if you were involved in that or where I was. I, can't, I remember like Fabian and other people, but like it was nuts where I couldn't, I could barely fit into the house. I had to like lay down front row on my back pretty much to watch the fight. I can't remember what, if you were involved. Tell in me that. where it was that, where's the house? Where's the house? Well, that, that, that'll help us figure out the fight. It was is it in is it in the ago. is it in the Canisius area? Is it in the city west side area by me Elmwood Village? It could be like near Miano's when he lived near like Canisius. I feel like it was something. I I don't know. I, Ten Headley could have been. Just I, I like sorry <laughs> bad topic to bring up here live. But like well no because I because I have seen you at, like when you need to blend into an atmosphere or an environment or whatever. So I can just totally see you like. Like up against the wall, like 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 back just torqued for like twelve rounds, like just laying laying on a banister, just awful. No, I get to say I'm trying. I mean, it was probably it was either had to be Mayweather, Pacquiao, McGregor, Mayweather, and those were McGregor, Mayweather were those are the last two big ones. Mac uh, Pacquiao, De La Hoya was before that, or no, Mayweather, De La Hoya was before that. What's Mayweather gonna do next? Is he done? I hey, well, he could be know. done. Let's face it, though. Like, isn't his thing that he always, like, runs for, like, two to, like, three years, and then he gets, like, hit with the taxes from, like, his, like, fight before yeah. he's, like, I got to make, like, another $50 million or whatever. Exactly. Basically how it is. I'm pretty sure. Like, it's not even, like, a – but he does have sports betting. Let's not forget that. He, the guy is a shark. Okay. I, I don't know if that was a shot at me right there because, you know. What <laughs> What do you mean? I've never seen him post a loser, dude. I think he's undefeated. You. That's actually your theory. I'm stealing from you. Okay. Your theory is that Floyd Mayweather is undefeated in sports betting. Don't you stick oh, by that? He, exactly. He definitely does not post anything else. I mean, I can't. Cannot... Well, he's never lost. <laughs> he doesn't I mean, have anything to post. The millions that he's probably lost on sports betting. Like, Can you imagine? On. Can you imagine? Like, like no doubt he's lost ten million on sports in a day. Oh, I thought you were gonna say ten million, million all time. Oh my god! Yeah, that guy oh, in a day, in a day. But like, just like that swing is incredible. Speaking of that swing, swing, Don Paul W I V B. Oh. Are you kidding me? I, did you almost get tears seeing that last night? I mean, honestly, I haven't been that emotional since Gandalf showed up on the hill in uh, Lord of the Rings to save uh, them at Helm's Deep. But also the Avengers. I mean, it reminded me of just getting the gang back together. I mean, you got Don Paul. You got Jackie Walker. I mean, who is going to mess with that group, Al? Who's going to mess with that group? Speaking of, like, Floyd Mayweather and coming out of retirement, how many times is Don Paul just going to, like, show up over the next, like, five to ten years and come out of retirement, right? He retired once, 
from what? WIVB. Yeah. Same thing from WKVW. He's back again. He's back with Jackie. I love the combo. Listen, all I got to say is facts and money talk, okay? Nexstar, the company that owns WIVB, stock over the past year, down. Stock over the past six months, down. What do you think their stock did today? What do you think their stock did with Don Paul back in the mix? Uh, 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 it's up. Stock is up. So that's all I'm saying. Don Paul's back in the mix, and Next Star is back in the green for, for the moment. So Aaron, Man- Aaron Minkowski, look out for that <clears throat> job. I mean, Aaron, I mean, if I was, I mean, let's face it. It's like you know, it, I I feel like if you're Aaron Minkowski, even if you're Baglini, who's like got to be his teammate now. Like Don Paul is your teammate, you know? Yeah. Like like Baglini is basically like Tavares Jackson when when Brett Favre decided he wanted to be a Viking. You know, like Tavares Jackson's the future. They want to build around Tavares Jackson. But for right now, I mean, Brett Favre's got one more year in him. And Don Paul's got a couple more forecasts in him. So he's, he's back and he's, and he's out dealing. What about Hammer on, on Channel 2? I mean, his kids don't I even I mean, Pat like Hammer, I can <laughs> – Pat Hammer, it, it right? takes a special degree, though, to roast yourself. So you got to give kudos to Pat Hammer, though. I mean, it is a shame that his kids don't even want a weather breakdown from him, but <laughs> – Shout out Kaylee went too. Let's not forget Kaylee. Spectrum, wow. Spectrum fam. Spectrum fam making some noise today with John Scott. Oh my God. <laughs> Speaking of John Scott and Heather Prusak, I mean, I mean, I, I slid in her DMs again today. I just said, you want these koozies? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are like a week. No, I did it again yesterday or today. Yeah, yeah, I said, listen, you're going to Charleston. Come on now, trying to help you out. No response again today. It's just – Oh, jeez. You hate when you get that no DM response. It's like, are they not yeah. seeing them or are they seeing them and just ignoring them? That's why I put oh, read receipts on. I leave yeah. the mystery out of it. And I hit her like three minutes after a tweet. <laughs> three minutes after a tweet, huh? Yeah. Yep. I saw her name pop up. Boom. Not ideal. I mean, that, that's a great tactic by you, obviously. So, like, you knew. You knew. I always so, think, like, what if I was Brad Pitt, you know? Like, would they not be responding? What do you mean? Like, um, what if I was Brad Pitt? Like, they would be responding. Everybody responds to Brad Pitt. He's a superstar. Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, whoever. Yeah, if you're a guy like Brad Pitt and you're sending out a, you're sending out a Yeah, DM, like, can you imagine like, getting no responded as Brad Pitt? Like, never. So, like, that's the thing. Like, it, like when, you, when you did the scouting, you knew she sent the tweet and she responded. It's tough. It's tough. It's a tough, tough owl today. It's okay. Kudos to you, though. Bouncing back, and you're ready for another day. 100%. All right. Got to talk about next topic. This, uh, what was trending yesterday, Maniac? This Jerry Sullivan tweet got a lot of Buffalo fans fired up. Nothing like Sabres Twitter. It was totally clips of Reinhardt. It was a topic a lot of – I mean, I chimed in on it, and people let me have it, so I, I could only imagine what Jerry was getting. But it's so funny. I mean, people are all over the place on it. Sabres Twitter has nowhere to go. Sabres Twitter is in a phone booth for the next six months. The, the next NHL season isn't supposed to begin until January. Oh. Of next season. Or next year, obviously. Yeah. So, not good. Sabres Twitter is just going to be toiling their, their thumbs. That's why I said shout out to our friends at Expected Buffalo. I would also keep an eye on Crossing Swords. I'm expecting uh, Ty B and the boys to get cooking on a lot of stuff going to the playoffs. I think we might have some stuff with expected Buffalo. Obviously, Al, you got your avalanche future, but Sabres Twitter fired up about Reinhardt. Sullivan says he hasn't done much, and I mean, I think there's an argument to be made for that. People are pointing to his 2016-2017 numbers, Al, but he hasn't scored the last two years without Eichel. I mean, that's my take, and people said that I was wrong, and that he makes Eichel a better defender, and I'll take that, and I'll take that L, but... I, it's easy to see why people are so all over the board. You saw Funnel Guy chime in. Did you see that? Yeah, I mean, but here's the deal. Like, any star – not even a star player, but, like, any, like, first-liner or second-liner player that's been on the Sabres, like, clearly you want them with Eichel. You know what I mean? Like – You do. The, like well, the, but then what do you do with Skinner? Well, that's you're, what I'm you're saying. Gonna put, like, says that the, – the Skinner is the real – Skinner, like, when you say you painted yourself in the corner, Skinner is the paint. Yeah. Skinner, Skinner is where you're painted in the corner. If you did, if you, if Skinner was an unrestricted free agent, you'd probably be kicking him to the curb, 
or at least like letting him test the waters after 100%. last season. But instead, you're locked in for six, seven years. And I'm not you, saying we're not going to embrace Skinner. The guy scored 40 plus goals two seasons ago. He's clearly showed he'd be successful. And if you look at his five on five numbers over the past five to six years, he's one of the best players in the league. So don't forget that. But Yes, his contract is the thing that makes the Reinhardt decision a little bit more difficult because versus just obviously signing a very good player who scores about, you know, almost 0.8 points per game or 0.75 points per game, Jack Eichel's best friend on the team, you have to give it some thought, obviously, on how much money you want to put to a guy who might not be able to score without him. And the Sabres need people right now that can perform without Eichel. That's the biggest thing. That's without, my, my right? biggest thing is that you got to get people who can be successful. Again. It's obviously said that way you can put your guys who aren't with them. Anyone can score with Eichel. That's my opinion. Yes. I feel like that's been validated. That, I mean, that's not rocket science. It's not yeah. rocket science that Skinner's better with Eichel, that Reinhardt's better with Eichel, but we need other lines to score yeah. goals. Like, remember when, when Eichel's hurt or he's not playing, what do people do? Pound the other team. Tons yeah. of money because, I mean, what are the Sabres without Eichel? It's sad. You get, you get the Eichel. You get Eichel on the first line scoring, and you have the L- L- Larson, Ocposo, Gergensen's line, which is your fourth line. So those are both your above-average lines. You need something on that second and third. That's the ultimate dilemma with this team, in my opinion. Obviously, I could be wrong. I could be a complete idiot. But, Maniac, what's up with the Jerry Sullivan hate? No, it's interesting. I mean, you know, it's kind of like a hub. It's like, you know, people just want to be around. It's easy to hate. And it's exactly like Nate Geary was looking at his Reddit today. And he's like, oh, my gosh, these people are going. It's it's funny. I think if, like someone said, if a lot of those people saw him in real life or in real life or whatever, they wouldn't be saying that stuff. But we've seen it with, you know, people who say stuff on the keyboard or on the Twitter. And then you see him in real life. They act a little bit differently. It's a different environment that we're in nowadays, man. There's just no accountability for like what yeah. you say on the internet yeah. I mean, especially if your picture is you know not yourself yep. especially if your name is not yourself so it's very interesting to see what goes in there but it's very easy to hate he's, he's but he also stirs it up we, we know that jerry likes stir up he likes playing that role a little bit he even confided to us that he does so he probably he thrives in it that's the spot he thrives in yeah and i mean jerry sullivan still to this day in my opinion goes down in history as one of my favorite guests all time on train wreck. Um, I thought it was phenomenal. I did not know what to expect, but for a guy that I want to go out, have a beer with or have a cocktail with, or come over, watch a, a sports game NBA finals. He was awesome. The stories he had for us, uh, the show that night, the performance he put on still to me in this day goes down in history for train wreck. And I thought he was an awesome guest and yeah, Everyone thinks he's a negative Nancy out there. It's always negative. But what did, what did Jerry tell us? It's constructive criticism. It's like, it's stuff that's warranted to be said. He's not just going out there being negative on purpose about every single thing, about the Bills, about the Sabres. It's stuff that's warranted to be negative about or, or, or criticize. And, and obviously, Sabres fans and Bills fans don't like it. But you got to have people like Jerry in Buffalo. I think he said, like, he's made his brand by – or made his, you know, mark by challenging the authority throughout his career. And as he's gotten older, that kind of sounds more like bickering. I think that, that that's the thing that a lot of people yeah. interpret as. And, yeah, it's easy for them to say he sucks or whatever. But let's face it. Nobody was talking about Reinhardt on uh, Sunday, okay? Then Jerry tweets about him Monday morning. What's, tweet, what's trending in New York State come noon, come 1 p.m.? He gets the needle moving, and for that, that means something, for sure. No, you're right. I mean, trend, uh, Ryan, yeah, you sent me that screenshot of Reinhardt trending on Twitter over, what, 7,000 tweets at a time. But you're right. He's got an influence. People still follow him. People still yeah, want to see it. people put validity to what he says. I mean, yeah. you can say whatever you want about who has the most knowledge. I mean, if, if knowledge was everything, you know, Chad D. Demonis, this would be GM of the Sabres, you know, by now, like, or whatever, with all the work they've done and everything. Chandra would be his assistant, or Chandra would be DJ Milk, you know? Yeah. So, real quick, before we wrap up, I want to talk about uh, last Thursday. Uh, you know, Maniac and I had the opportunity to uh, go down to one Seneca Tower, do a tour, and I was telling Maniac that, that's the first time I drove down the 33 in probably 90, 95 days. And 
already the changes outside of one Seneca Tower. All the construction, stuff that's going down, but seeing that masterpiece and what's happening there is stupid impressive, uh, and I cannot wait to see what August brings. A lot of fun stuff going on. First up, go to our Instagram and enter the Seneca One giveaway if you haven't already. Winner will be picked Thursday. But, yeah, Al, you're right. I mean, going into last year, right, did you ever associate, like, going to Chippewa to watch, like, a Bills game? No. You know, like, made that decision? No, definitely. Me, neither did I. Any, the only other time I had been to Seneca One Tower, I had just started a job with HSBC, and I was getting, like, my employment profile, like, validated or something because they're a bank. Obviously, you know how those things work. It's a little bit different when you get yeah. hired by a bank versus just a normal company. Um, but – yeah, I mean, just it was like a standard hotel or like business lobby, and you go up, and it's just kind of like older offices or whatever. A lot of incredible stuff going on. A lot of community building at Seneca One Tower. So a lot of fun stuff happening with them. And from the sounds of it, from the sounds of our people, Al, Trainwreck's going to be in the mix. Yeah, super exciting stuff. Um, just the people we met with, they're really fired up. Um, I, I see it as a place and a future for Trainwreck Sports when it comes to you know, live shows, live events, um, you know, really building this brand. And it was just something I, I was just very, very super impressed with what's going on down there. Um, when it comes to Bison's games, when it comes to Sabres games, and I even talked, you know, to some of the people we talked to down there where, you know, we were in Vegas a few months ago and we saw what happened, you know, for a regular season, uh, you know, game when it comes to the Knights. But obviously it's a little different. It's like, beautiful weather there all the time but I, I just see something different I see something more than the 716 um, and I feel like it's gonna be a great opportunity for Sabres fans or just a typical sports fan I feel like one Seneca Tower is turning that into something where just because the Sabres aren't playing or the Bisons aren't playing that's gonna be a place to go to watch a game or see a game and it seems like a great environment to be a part of and I know we have a lot of friends that go to Washington Square before games we have a lot of friends that go to Pearl Street before Sabres games Maybe before Bison's game, same thing for both locations. You don't think of Seneca One Tower traditionally as a spot for that, but they're changing the narrative and they're doing so in a number of ways. We're looking forward to, you know, you guys learning about that as well. Yeah, and you saw the updated stuff in technology. Like they're talking what? Like no touch screen to buy something. It's yeah. All on your, it's all on your phone. It's all an app. Absolutely they joined, incredible. They joined a Slack community. Like you could tell that place is going to be very modern, up to date. Kind of like a – the vibe that I got, Maniac, was like a kind of like a college-type atmosphere. Yeah, campus. it's a campus. It's yeah. a legitimate campus. And, and you guys are uh, like – and I would be saying this too if I was here in the service. I would be saying, but what's there? I mean, they are establishing – there's a number of hospitality places they are working on right now. Yep. Corporate retreats, great for outings, great for hanging out, great for throwing parties, great for before Bison's games, Savers games, everything you can think of. So a lot of exciting stuff. It's the Seneca One Tower Power Hour. Oh, my God. Get me a part of that ASAP. Uh, but, Maniac, time for some shout-outs. You ready to rip one? I am ready to rip one. Real quick, too, before we do that. Yeah. So, we talked a little bit. Tiger Woods was fifth the last time we checked in in Masters odds. Okay. I believe, right? Does that sound right? Like, there were about four yeah. above them, I believe. It, at that point, it was McElroy, Kepka, Thomas, Rahm ahead of him. Yep. Three people have jumped him since then. Ooh. Can you name them? Okay. Re sorry, read me the top five one more time. The top four who were already ahead of him last time we checked, and I believe it was about two weeks ago, Rory McElroy, Kepka, Rahm, and Thomas. Rahm was the one that I think you struggled with, if I remember correctly. Rahm, McElroy, uh, Thomas. JT and who was the other one? Who's the fourth? Uh, Rom Kepka McElroy Thomas Kepka, and you said three more people jumped. So three people have jumped. To be fair, they have the same odds. They're just alphabetically located above him. But okay, but they jumped him. Can you name them? McElroy, JT, Kepka, Rom. Uh, one guy. One guy has been playing really well. You got to think one of them's got to be DJ, right? Dustin Johnson. Yeah, correct. Okay. He, he has joined him. So, so these guys are actually all tied to them again. Tied, but still people that are in the same. Yeah, range. yeah. They're now that now they bumped up. 
because the next person, so Tiger's at plus 1,800. The next competitor, I'll tell you this to get him off your mind, Xander Shoffley, that's Burr's boy, plus yep. 2,500. So there's a little bit of a gap there, plus 1,800, plus 2,500 at the Masters. All right, so who's at? So two more people that are with him right now, 18 to 1. Webb Simpson? Nope. Despite his victory, Webb Simpson still plus 2,800. Webb's been playing great lately, too. Bro, Not his putting was incredible. I mean, I haven't watched some, like, serious golf in a minute, but just watching him casually hitting, like, 20, 25-foot yeah. putts like it was nothing is insane. Like Miano at Baba Link. Seriously, Miano at Baba Link status. Um, These are names that I think you could get, obviously. I would even try to, oh, so, yeah, so, so you got DJ. There's one other guy. I mean, he's, he's in that, you know, young talent pool. And then the other guy has been playing well the past couple weeks. Yeah, I think he's been in, like, All the right. top ten. Spieth? Spieth is correct. Spieth is the young, the young talent pool. <clears throat> and then the last one, I, I mean, I can't think he's older than, like, 30, 31 or something, but I guess he could be. And you said this is the guy that's been playing well the past guy couple is, weeks? Yeah, he's been playing well. Damn, I really thought this would be Webb Simpson because he's been playing. This guy's 26. This guy's 26. I just looked it up. Seven professional wins. So I guess I'm, I'm the stooge because, I mean, his, he's fifth overall. He's, he's fifth, fifth on the PGA right now. Jesus, Peter Murphy. Um, <laughs> shout out to your boy, Peter Murphy. I mean, I don't. I don't want to take too long here because I know we're live. Um, we're good. We're good. I. I um, you, you can. Ooh, I'm, I, I know I'm gonna lose it when you tell me it too. Good TJ. After this, I got some other odds we're gonna talk. So don't. So don't even worry about rushing them. All right. All right. You can cut this too. Yeah. Um. I mean, bro, nothing's popping in my head right now. Give up? Yeah. Bryson DeChambeau. Plus 1,800. He's played well. I think top 10 finishes at uh, the last two events. Got that going on. So now this he's is the only – He's such a hothead, though. He's such a hothead. <laughs> that's the thing. He, he, he's that case. He goes, that, that's the great thing about golfers. They're all kind of like, to be honest, douchey. Like, they're all kind of, like, a little bit, like and, – and I think they stand out more because you can see their faces. They can react. Yep. You can hear them a lot more. If you heard that from everybody, I think you probably think that a lot, about a lot more, at least, or at least I would. Um, the only other one I got – so you got the 93rd Academy Awards. So this is a future. So this is still, hypothetically, eight months away. But who is the favorite for best actor at plus 500 right now? Mr. Robot? No. He already won Best Actor last year. Back to back. No, he's not running back to back. This guy, this guy is famous, and he was in the news a couple months ago for a big reason. Bro, you know I'm not like this kind of like actor and movie guy. I'll give, I'll give you 10 seconds. I'll give you 10 seconds. I'm just saying, you know, you know this is not me. It's not Idris Elba. He's plus 2,000. It's not Matt Damon. He's plus 1,400. It's not Gary Oldman. He's plus 800. I mean, I watched Disturbia last night. The correct answer at plus 500. The first celebrity, if I remember, besides Rudy Gobert to say he had coronavirus, Tom Hanks. <sighs> plus 500 favorite at, at the 93rd Oscars for. Oh, we got to get we, we got to get Hollywood Gold involved for this. Yeah, Hollywood Gold. I mean, we definitely got to get him on a Zoom for sure. When it comes to that, he is – I mean, if there's, ten, if there's 10 picks, he's getting 9 out of 10 easily. But by that time, when they come around, aren't they all normally, like, minus 500 favorites? Well, by then, like, like people have seen – because you see all the other awards before yeah. the Academy Awards, Golden Globes, too. Like, so you see, see like, all the previews. So you kind of know yep. where everything's going for sure. Yep. But, yeah, shout out. So, great job on the odds, eight. Good, good, good try, right? You got two of the three on the golfer, so nothing to be shamed about. But uh, 
Shout outs. Uh, I'll say UB Athletics. So we got a big presser coming up with Lance tomorrow. Um, we'll bring that to you courtesy of Pazda Electric. And then we also have uh, – well, we also had Coach Jack uh, calling out Syracuse. Did you see that? No. So she was on with Syracuse because obviously Coach Felicia Legit Jack played at Syracuse. And she was saying that they don't represent, like, female athletes enough. Not something that's a problem at UB. I mean, for sure, you see as many female athletes on the wall at Alumni Arena and everything as yep. males, for sure. But, yeah, lack of representation. She called out the Cuse. I thought you'd be all over that. The Orangeman? Oh, yeah. Well, no, the um, Orange. They switched to the Orange a couple years I, ago. I know. That's why I said that. That's what they used to be called. Um, so, let's see here. Shout out all the fathers. I know it's late. Father's Day was Sunday. Uh, grandpa, grandfather's birthday was last week. Shout out to him. His 84th. My mom yesterday just turned in 59. The big 60 coming up in 365 days. And shout out to the guy that tweeted me on Twitter that said, try Transit Music Lounge. Maniac, that food last night was absolute fire in a place that you need to check out on Wing Reviews. Could not believe how phenomenal Five different wings, the pizza logs, fries. I mean, they had 80 wings to cook in multiple sides, and they killed it. So here's the thing. Uh-oh. Is that Transit Muget Music Lounge, I've heard good things. Yep. And the owner, what's the, uh, what's the place next to the, by the Salem Field, by the Salem, in between Washington Square? The other bar over there. Petty Bones? No, I'm blanking on it. Another, oh, we Union, reviewed it on Wing Reviews and gave Union, it like a 30. Union, Union Pub. Pub. Union Pub. They own Union Pub now. So what happened was we did the Union Pub review, and we were talking about Wings one time, and someone was like, what was your worst review? And I was like, Union Pub, because they like tasted like rubber and were terrible. And that, those yeah. were facts. But uh, – the guy who owns Transit Music Lounge, who I think responded to you to go to Transit Music Lounge, messaged me that day that I have to go back to Union Pub and, and try it again. So that'll be the no, first. No, no. My guy's not the owner. But, but no, the, the owner at Transit Music Lounge, he's not? I could have sworn I saw it was. Same guy. No, I'm saying the, pe the person that tweeted me was not Transit Music Lounge related. Okay. Well, the Transit Music Lounge is in the Union Pub game, and that's going to be our first ever wow. redemption stop on uh, Wing Reviews. But we'll see how it's going. And actually, you know, we could obviously talk about this because, I mean, the cat's out of the bag now that we did Corona. We were trying to do it like we were filming along the way with Wing Reviews, but we were lucky to get, like, you know, shout out Supreme and our intern Adam for helping with that uh, and everyone who was on the Wing Reviews, obviously, because – yeah. We filmed those ahead of time, fortunately. So we were lucky to have like 12 out of the last 13 weeks have had a wing review or whatever. So we'll be filming another wing review soon, hopefully with phase four coming up. And the best part of the, that, that uh, meal last night, pizza logs wrapped in bacon with barbecue sauce on top. Barbecue could, sauce on top really does bring that together. Could have been the most phenomenal – appetizer pizza log whatever you want to call it like it was just i can't describe how great that taste was hey same taste our listeners have our our viewers have right now as this episode winds down my good man yep rocking it down here you got Tuesday that night. i got this yeah I, I i got i got none of that near me yeah you got phil behind you that's your shadow well, folks thanks for joining us tonight you know where we're at train wreck sports facebook YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. More ring reviews are going to be popping soon. Furs on the Rocks is killing it. Crossing Swords, The Cap, our Buffalo Bills podcast. Ryan Tom is coming with some big things real soon, so be tuning in. Shout Man. out to the team. Yeah. Shout out to Posdy Electric, 716-698-2711. Making it happen. Tons of good stuff coming, folks. Sports are coming back, so you'd be silly not to think that we are going to be amping it up as well. No doubt, 100%. People know this train never stops. If you want a koozie, Heather Prusak or anyone else, fire a DM. We'll make it happen for you. Lots of summer left. Good night.